Hello, everybody. Hope all is well. We welcome you to our Global Pandemic Coronavirus Facebook Live Prayer Revival. Our aim is that we will uplift the Lord, that we will talk about God, talk about his kingdom, so that we can bring more information to God's children and to the world at, at a whole. Uh, let me go ahead. I want to mute. I hear some feedback here. Let me go ahead and mute one of the lines and see if that helps us. Uh, I want to introduce everybody that helped us. There we go. Uh, Brother Evangelist, good luck. I had to mute your line. We had a lot of extra noise. I'll bring you back in shortly. I want to introduce everybody to you. Uh, I am very privileged that uh, some of my friends have chosen to join us today. Uh, the top left of the screen, uh, you have uh, Pastor Derek Knox. Uh, he's a pastor over in Lansing. I'll let him tell you more about his ministry shortly. Uh, I met uh, Pastor Derek over at uh, Cornerstone University. Uh, he has his master's degree from Cornerstone University in the Bible and theology. Uh, he's very good friends with Pastor Rhodes, uh, uh, Dr. Clifton Rhodes, uh, and our, uh, Dr. Royce Evans, for those of you in Grand Rapids that know those folks. Uh, at the bottom left, I have uh, Brother Jay Whitley, uh, Minister of Music Jay Whitley. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay and I have been friends since the third grade, grew up in the neighborhood together, worked with AT&T together, so we know each other very well. I asked him to come in and help uh, minister uh, in music, help worship us in music. Uh, in the bottom right, the bottom right, uh, we have a brother from Obaja, Obuju. I'm not going to get it right. Abijah, he's going to tell us better than I can tell you. Abijah, Nigeria. Now I got a Nigeria right, Nigeria. Um, brother Evangelist, good luck, Uwuzer. And I, I, a loser. I hope I got that right. I'm pretty close. Okay. Now, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, folks that are in the United States, I'm going to tell you something. When I first seen the brother's first name, Good Luck, it threw me off because I had never met a person whose name was Good Luck. And I asked Bishop Thomas uh, Opute over in Ghana, I said, is that common for people to have a name like that? And he says, David... A lot of the people in Africa think that your brothers in USA have strange names. So, so it's a cultural, it's a cultural thing. We have to learn more about our culture. And just like in the Bible, a lot of the characters in the Bible, when they were named by their parents, their names meant something. Mm -hmm. And so, good luck obviously means something when his parents named them. So, he's good luck. Okay. All right. Uh, Brother Jake, go ahead and take it away, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah, Father God. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. You know, we thank you, Lord. Your mercy's been great. The fact that we're here and able, Father God, to get ready to, to minister and music and song and worship you lets us know that your mercy is great. Your mercy is new every day, the Bible says. Your mercy is great. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Great is your mercy toward me. Mm. Yes. Your loving kindness toward me. Great is your mercy toward me. Great is your grace. Always provide. For me, mm. great is your mercy toward me. Yeah, yeah. Great is your mercy toward me. Great is your grace. Great is your mercy toward me. Your loving kindness toward me. Great is your mercy toward me. Great is your grace. Great 
is your mercy toward me. Your loving kindness toward me. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. Oh, you're always there, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know what to do if it wasn't for your love and kindness. Great is, great is, great is, great is your mercy toward me. Your, your loving kindness toward me. Great is, great is, great is, great is, oh. Is so great toward me. Your loving kindness is great toward me. Great is your mercy toward me. Great is your grace. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. That was just beautiful. Thank you, man. Man, I know we can all relate to God's loving kindness. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Talking about that mercy. Mm, thank you. Uh, uh, brother, uh, brother, uh, Pastor Derek, would you mind leading us into prayer, please? Sure. sure. Heavenly Father, we come before you just thanking you, God, for one being God. Um, and not just God, but a loving God, a merciful God, a graceful God, a faithful God. Lord, we just thank you that we were able to raise up this morning with breath in our bodies and with new mercies. Lord, as your word says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Our help comes from the Lord. So even in this hour where many are experiencing tragedy, uh, where many are mourning, uh, experiencing loss. God, let them know that as long as they have you, they, have, they are going without nothing. They have everything. Lord, through the midst of it all, through the emptiness of their hearts, from any type of loss, Lord, we know that you are our comforter and that you, are, that you fill us up, God. So Lord, fill us up right now in the name of Jesus, with your anointing, Jesus. with your love, with your grace, with your peace, with your comfort in this very moment. Fill us till our cup runneth over, God. And when it runs over, let it flow to our loved ones. Let it flow to our brothers and sisters. Let it flow out to a sinful world that you have given us power and dominion through your kingdom, through your word, through your blood, through your sacrifice to change our very environments by speaking the name of Jesus. So we speak the name of Jesus right now. We speak the name of Jesus to the good and we speak it to the bad. We speak it to the hurt. We speak it to the powerful. We speak it to the weak. We speak the name of Jesus to any and everything right now in the name of Jesus. Help us, God. There are those that are worried, God, and let them know right now that they don't have to be anxious for anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication. So Lord, we come to you right now in this moment, in this hour of prayer, knowing that you are the only help, not only not the only help that we know, but the only help that the world has, God. You have mm. always been the only help that the world has and had the Heavenly Father. Mm. So Lord, we thank you for your help. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, as you were praying, I was thinking about the, how the virus has affected the world. Yeah. And I just saw some numbers last night on Don Lemon's show on CNN uh, mm -hmm. that uh, 
over uh, over a million people have been affected around the world with this virus. And uh, what we have, uh, what, over 40,000 deaths in the United States. Yeah. Uh, you know, this this is just a very, very, it's a tremendous effect that we're having. And so mm-hmm. I want to bring in evangelist Good Luck Uwuzer, uh and have him give us a word about what's going on in his community in Nigeria, uh, what the virus has done to affect his area, uh, the commerce, the economy, how it's affect the churches and the kingdom of God. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, please take your time to listen to this brother because he's coming over the, uh, his voice is coming over the internet. So we got to be patient, but listen intently. It's a very good brother. We've been talking for the past couple of weeks now. Uh, Evangelist, go ahead, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Definitely in Nigeria right now, uh, everything is going smoothly, but um, uh, they just removed the lockdown uh, today. We have been indoors for about one month and one week, uh, one week now. And by the grace of God, uh, the pandemic as coronavirus has affected our economy very, very bad. I can tell you right from where I am speaking now, there are a lot of hardship around and the people are crying and uh, they have been running theaters, theaters since today they opened the, the lockdown. I would will, I will like to tell the total number of people who have been confirmed with the COVID-19. Uh, we have in Nigeria the total number of 2,388. Why mm. 385 has been discharged and we record our fracas that's the death of 85 dead. Um, if you come to the economy or to the standard of living in Nigeria, I will rate it uh, 45 percent right now. It's not up to the normal percentage. It's not up to 50. It's not up to pass mark right now. Already in Christendom, um, it has affected me especially. I normally go out to preach the gospel, to set the captive free. And I also know that around the world, that around Nigeria as a whole, most of our churches have been locked and killed. And uh, as they ease the lockdown, the church is still locked up. And um, I know the gathering of the brethren is so important, uh, which we have missed so much in this time around. Um, the, uh, also tell you that uh, the initiative I have, initiative I have during this time, it makes me to understand that Oh, the, 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 I need to go extra mile in preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you can see from the Roman chapter 3, verse 53, we all have seen. You know, definitely I can tell you that uh, the sins of the world are the reason why we are suffering. And I can tell you, mm. God can allow something to happen. You know, when they were talking about uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, they come from um, China. <laughs> Look at the people saying it as they, they did not hear from God. 
is really a, a heart from God, they will not say such. Because I God clearly stated it. So right here in Nigeria, uh, there are a lot of things happening. COVID-19 has created a lot of vacuum in the mind of many. Uh, I, I was watching one of my uh, friend with uh, a video today, and I, I will tell you that this friend have been trying to tell him to come to Christ all along for many years. But quite this time, he find himself calling the pianist and he begins to sing praises to God. Call me on phone, my dear brother. I don't know that God has such power. So I can still say that uh, with this pandemic, some people in Nigeria has learned a lot of lessons. And that lesson is they have learned that there is no other one that has life apart from mm. God. Thank you so much. God bless you. It's good. So good. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Jay, if you could, brother, could you lead us in the prayer? Amen. Hallelujah, Father God. Lord, we, we just come to exalt you. We come to lift your name, Father. You said your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, we're coming together today, Lord God, that your kingdom, your principles, but manifest in the earth in this season, Lord God. And Jesus, you said the government will be upon your shoulders. Lord, we know you're the head and we're the body, which makes us a part of yeah. that government, part of the shoulders, Father God. Lord God, just lead us, direct us. For you said when your spirit would come, the spirit of truth would lead us and guide us into all truth. So yeah. Father God, we pray in this season, your truth would manifest in every way possible. For it said, even if we're even possible, even the elect would be deceived, Lord. But we know that by your spirit, we're not going to walk into any deception or be deceived. But Father, use these mighty men of God from all over the world, all over the country, Lord God, to bring your will for this final harvest, Lord God. For you said the harvest is truly white, right? And the laborers are few. Lord God, put us in a position to bring forth this harvest. Give us a word in this season to bring yeah. forth your harvest. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Knox, I would, uh, if you don't mind, Pastor, I would like for you to you know, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit more about your ministry and what you've been doing. If you want to share about your family. Uh, by the way, uh, Pastor Knox, uh, we, we share a very important date. Uh, yesterday was his, uh, him and his wife's uh, anniversary, their marriage anniversary. Uh, it happens to be uh, my baby girl's birthday. I don't think I told you that part. And yeah. yesterday, un unbeknown to me, I received my preacher's license. That was a surprise. Yeah. So May yeah. May third May third is a great day that I'll never yeah. ever forget. Uh, uh, but uh, Pastor Knox, uh, you know, please give us a word of encouragement and let us know how everything is flowing in Lansing uh, with the virus as well, please. Yeah, sure. So uh, Pastor Derek Knox, I am the pastor uh, of Church of Elohim, a church plant uh, that we started about five years ago. We are non-denominational, um, but we are a Christ-believing, crucified Christ-believing word church. Um, and what we've been doing since the pandemic hit is when the school stopped, uh, we had a lot of kids within the community that we minister at that their, their most important meals or the meals that they were most dependent upon came from school. Um, so we mm. really transitioned and stepped in there and now are providing meals for the kids every Monday through Friday. Um, and we had expected to go until April 6th, uh, but this is, you know, with the extension and everything else, this has pushed it out until we're gonna do this until what would have been the end of the school year. Um, and continue to do that. But it's just been a blessing how the community has supported. Um, we, we've been getting donations in from Korea, from Africa, from all over the US, Texas, California, everywhere. Uh, people just sowing seeds, um, really seeing the vision 
Um, and I've really seen God provide the increase throughout it all. And when, when you say, how is it in Lansing? Lansing is pretty, it's pretty different right now, right? And that we have a lot of the protesters that are angry that we're still in quarantine converging into Lansing. So mm. we, we, it's, it's kind of become a hotbed because of that, right? And when they come, they're, they're not just coming to the Capitol and leaving out, they're, they're patronizing businesses. So as they're patronizing businesses, whatever they have, or had is starting to spread even more, right? So it's it's become crazy because you have protesters that one aren't abiding by, you know, the the not just the stay at home rules, but the separation rules, you know, the six feet. Um, so it's 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 been a little crazy, right? Uh, but what it, it's also been encouraging too, though, for the church because I've seen. Uh, the church really take a, a change and a shift back to what it was originally intended to do, right? You, you see more people having church in their homes. You see more people um, worshiping and really seeing that the building is not the church, right? So the, the awesome thing that's come out of this tragedy is that God is beginning to really not just broadcast his church, uh, but to build and strengthen his church outside of the four walls that it's been in for so long for the past few decades or so. Right. So I've been encouraged because in this hour, you know, the word talks about is it's in Second Corinthians mm -hmm. about how, you know, God shows his strength through our weakness, even though this is a weak time for the country, for our communities, we still serve a strong God. Right. God is still doing something in the midst of this pandemic. He is still doing something in the midst of this tragedy. And we can't understand it. Most of us don't understand it right now. But as long as we know, as long as we keep in the forefront of our minds that God is God, God is sovereign, God is powerful, God is loving, God is faithful. And when you keep that in mind, you know that everything else will be all right, right? I, I think of just relationships between children and parents. I, I think as a child, even though my mother raised me as a single mother, I didn't have to worry about certain stuff, right? But I didn't even know as a child that I had to worry, right? So as adults, we have to retrain our minds, really. And, and I think that's what Christ was talking about. You have to be as a child to come into the kingdom. We have to retrain our minds that the father has us. We're going to be OK, mm -hmm. right? It's crazy. And I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to protect us through the midst of it. I don't know how he's going to change stuff. But that's daddy. And we good as long as daddy is there. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I think yeah. that's the awesome thing throughout this tragedy is that is it should drive us or grow us all closer to God, the father. Right. God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit in such a way that we realize he, he puts us he gives us these moments for us to realize that we are children of God, not peers of God. We're children of God. Because we think about stuff throughout life and worrying and planning and doing all of these things, we almost put ourselves in a position to where we are treating ourselves as peers of God. And there are these moments in time like this where he reminds us we are children of God, right? So just as a child, be as a child, trust the father, trust that he's doing something through the midst of it. Trust that whatever is happening through all of it, that God sees the big picture. We only see what's right in front of us, right? So that's, that's been the awesome thing through all of this. I've seen families grow closer. I've seen churches grow stronger because of it. I've seen other churches emerge from this uh, because of the pandemic and because of the church buildings are being shut down, right? We, we, don't, we don't have any more discussions about how many members you got because all of us, we, we don't really even know at this point, right? <laughs> you have who's in your home at this point. <laughs> So it, it, it's, it's not these petty discussions that, that we're having about ministry and about church, but it's back to like the foundational pieces of the word of God, right? The first church, they started out of homes. They worshiped in homes together. We're back at that point. So I'm encouraged that through this process, God is doing something, but it would behoove us to really listen to what God is saying and doing in this moment so we don't miss it, right? So we don't just go back to what it was before because God allowed this thing for a reason, right? So what are we gonna learn from it? That's the main thing. Man, hallelujah, hallelujah. I, all I can say is amen, amen. I, I, right on point in my mind, yes sir. And what I heard, what I heard is 
We are children of yeah. God. Yeah. We're not peers. You know, yeah. and, and I remember I'm I remember my own dad saying that I'm not your friend. I, I'm your dad. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. And, and, and I said the same thing. You know, yeah. I'm not your friend. I'm your dad. It's my job yeah. to raise you and guide you. And that's the same thing with God, man. Thank you for that beautiful message. Uh, uh, I asked uh, Brother Whitley if he would bless us uh, and take us higher into worship. Praise God. Praise God. You know, no matter what we're going through, God is going to get his glory. The, the Bible says the whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth. It don't matter what's going on. God's glory oh, yeah. is here on this earth and he's going to get his glory out of it. So this song came to me as soon as you asked me. I see the Lord seated on the throne in glory, the train of his robe, fill the temple with glory, and the whole earth is filled, and the whole earth and the whole earth is filled with his glory. I think I'll say it again. I see the Lord yeah. seated on the throne mm. in glory, the train of his robe, fill the temple with glory yeah, and yeah. the whole earth is filled and the whole earth is filled and the whole earth is filled with his glory and the angels cry holy Holy, yeah. holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And the angels cry, holy, yeah. holy, holy, holy. Good luck. Would you please lead us in the prayer, brother? Our Father in heaven, the greater of the whole universe, the mighty man in battle, the hour has come for you to glorify yourself in the midst of your children, for you to prove to the whole world that you will let among men and that your word is here and amen in the life of each and everyone hearing our voice that you come and do your miracle because you told us you send it your word and you let your children father as we gather before thy presence i ask for your healing 
that he uses us to heal those that are sick in different parts of the world. Father, I ask that your word will transform the life of many and draw them nearer to you. That it please, I ask that you give the whole world healing in honesty that they may know that there is no one beside you in all the earth. Rise on our behalf and let your will be done in all the heads. Magnify yourself in our midst today. Let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, you know, I couldn't help but think uh, Brother Whitley was uh, singing that song. And um, I had had an opportunity to bring a word into a Facebook group yesterday in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, one of the things that I, that re reminded me of the word that you sang in that song was how God's in his temple and his glory fills the temple and the angels are around his throne crying out holy 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 and it reminds me of jonah here in verse 7 in chapter 2 he says when my soul fainted within me i remembered the lord and my prayer came unto thee and to thy holy temple Mm -hmm. And when I heard you sing that song, I said, thank you, Jesus, because I felt the spirit flowing all through. He mm -hmm. says, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee. His prayer left from the belly of the fish. His mm -hmm. prayer was heard. He cried unto the Lord and his prayer immediately went to the throne room. And he remembered God. And he said, his prayer went into thy holy temple. Ah, I want you to use your spiritual mind and imagine a cry out to God. And your prayer immediately is received by God the Son, the servant of man, the God man. He immediately receives the prayer and transfers it to God the Father, the creator of the universe. And God hears us, and he responds to us. Mm, what a mighty God we have. Like Pastor Knox says, I am your father, says God. I am your shepherd, says God. Come unto me, all that labor and heavy birth. His burden is light. Yes, sir. I thank God, man. I thank God. Uh, Knox, if you would like to give us a word of encouragement, if you have anything you'd like to say, man, this would be a good time. Yeah, yeah. as our evangelist, uh, good luck was speaking, um, and he and he spoke about the world. Um, we we've been in this series in Revelation, right, for Bible study, and we were in we we intersected at the Church of Ephesus, and what Jesus said to the Church of Ephesus was that he he named all of these good things. You've done all of this stuff. You fought for the faith. You you've done all of these things, but he said this I have against you, and that you've mm. gotten away from your first love, right? Mm. And when I when mm. I think about that, and when I really studied that passage or studied even just that part of it, right? He wasn't speaking about just the first love of Christ, like like Jesus gave us this command, which was really twofold, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, you know, with with all your might. But he also said, love your neighbor as yourself, right? So as evangelist, good luck was speaking, and he just mentioned the world, like healing the world. That's a lot of things we we forget about the world right even when we think about this pandemic like with some may have thought initially well that's just something from china right they're just dealing with that over in china so our 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 mindset and loving neighbor 
and loving brother and sister, no matter where we are, has has shifted right in such a point that we didn't we didn't care too much if we're being honest that it was happening in a whole nother country right <laughs> until it hit us right mm -hmm. so I I think about that passage again God being strength strong in our weak in our weakness a lot of us we don't realize we're weak until we have to be strong right. It's, it's a lot of times you go to the gym and you start off and you're trying to test yourself out and you're lifting weights, right? But you don't realize that you need to start a little lower than where you thought you were because you hadn't, you hadn't done that in a while. You probably never done it at all, right? There are situations like this where God is not only just testing us for us to see where we are but he's building us up to a place to where we need to be in our strength and our faith and our salvation and our love and not just love for ourselves but love for brother right not just love that we think we have for christ but he said if you god said if you love me then how can you hate your brother how can you not mm. love the very person that's right next to you right and we forget about that peace when stuff like this happens. think about if we were really loving how we should have when this whole stuff hit right when it was happening in china what if we started to, to pull resources to help out china then we would have known more stuff about this before it actually hit america right but we also would have been in the shape and in the position to really help out in such a way that when it did hit we already knew what to do it, it was just like that because we already had enough love enough care for our brothers overseas for our brothers in a whole another area of the country right like when we think about god we cannot limit him to just the u.s we cannot limit him to just our states we cannot limit him to just our cities but god is the god of the whole cosmos the whole world so if things are happening in china if it's happening in croatia if it's happening in alaska wherever the case may be we all need to be concerned about all of our our brothers and sisters right God, Jesus said you've done all of these things but this one thing I have against you is that you you you've gotten away from your first love what about your brothers how, how are you loving on them you forgot about them right and this effort to be a big city and this effort to be a big church and this effort to be a big community a lot of times we forsake and we forget about the the lesser than right? The least of these, as the word would call it, right? And God is saying we need to constantly keep our minds, we need to constantly keep our love in such a point to where it doesn't just hit the people in our immediate family or the people that we see, but those that are that have breath in their body, those that are in a whole nother country, like our prayers can reach them also, right? our sowing and our seeds, our, our giving, everything we do when it comes to not just love, but when it comes to sowing and when it comes to praying, when it comes to studying, all of that can reach, it, it's, it's, it doesn't have any limits as it relates to its reach, right? God, I think in the midst of this whole process is showing us that we are greater and we have more capacity than what we've given ourselves credit for because it's not us doing it. It's him doing it through us, right? It's the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us. Yeah, we'll get worried and yeah, we'll get frustrated and yeah, we'll think we're not enough if we're doing it in our own strength. But God gave us a comforter in the Holy Spirit for a reason. Jesus Christ left us this comforter called the Holy Spirit for a reason because he realized that there would be situations just like this that we couldn't handle within our own strength. And I need to give them some supernatural power in the midst of this thing, in the midst of tragedies, in the midst of storms, trials, and tribulations, I need to impart into them some supernatural power that they can use in these moments, right? Yes, How are you using your supernatural power is what we need to be asking ourselves. What are you doing to go greater than just your four walls, to go greater than just your home, to go greater than just your community? How are you loving with that supernatural that God placed on the inside of you before he knitted you in your mother's womb? How are you loving? How are you being faithful? How are you being obedient? How are you using that, right? Because it's, it's wow. like having this superpower and we just walking around not using it. God is saying, I gave you this for this time, Ooh. for this moment. The gate, when, when God Ooh. said he created his church, he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
right? And when I think about gates, I think about territory and how we've allowed the enemy to gain so much territory. And God is saying, I placed this power on the inside of you. Now I placed you in this moment where you can get big, where you can get stronger and you can go back and take the territory back, right? God has mm. given us the strength. He's given us the supernatural ability to take our stuff back. And it would behoove us mm. to all get on board because we have no limits. We, we're doing it right now. We broadcast into Africa. You broadcast into all over the U.S. You broadcast into other countries. God is showing us we have no limits to the strength and to the power that he's placed on the inside of us. And the things that the world think they created, God is using it for his glory. You think you created the internet? You think you created technology? God is using all of this. For his <laughs> right? This Amen. is the awesome thing through all of this. All the stuff that we think, all the stuff that we've slept on for so long, God is showing us just like he did grandmother back in the day. Oh, we, we don't have nothing to eat, grandma, but grandma would go in the kitchen and she would get some flour and she would get some eggs and she would whip some stuff up together and you have a whole meal right there right? We've been saying to God, we don't have nothing to eat. And God is saying, go in your house and you got this and you got that. And I've been saying to God, what am I going to do with this, with my ministry? And he said, oh, you got a worship team right there. You got a prayer right there. You got intercessors right there. You got all of this stuff right there. Go in the kitchen and use what you got. Right? Yes, sir. And I know that ain't proper English, but sometimes we need to get to that point to where I, I need to go back to the grandma days, right? Or she was in yeah. the kitchen and running and making making a meal with little to nothing. God has yeah. given us so yeah. much stuff that's already on the inside of us. Use what you have. We need to use what we have in this moment because we have the Holy Spirit. We have God the Father. We have God the Son. We have this Holy Trinity, right? And that's yes, the most sir. powerful thing yes, we've ever done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, when you said you got to go back to your grandma days, now, I, you know, my, one of my grandmas I call grandmother, and the other one I call granny. Yeah. Okay, and the whole family is like that. So when we say granny, everybody know who we talk about. <laughs> and we say grandmother, we all know who we talk about. Well, yeah. granny, granny used to say this. She said, David, I want you to repeat after me. And she would say this, she would say, and say it with passion. And she would say, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, I yeah, shall not yeah. want. Yeah. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Yeah. He restoreth my soul. Yeah. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Mm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow right, of death, yeah, yeah. I will fear no evil, for yeah. thou art with me. I hear them saying, use your superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. God says, go, go. My yeah. cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Brother Jay, what do you got for us? You want me doing that song? Okay. Uh, wow, good. That's good. Thanks for doing <laughs> Okay, let me see. After, after your song, after your song, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Evangelist good luck to prepare for the final words and I'll give the announcements and then we'll be done. Okay. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. The devil is defeated. We are blessed. Since thou hast walked the right way to light in the dark land. Since thou hast placed in thy heart all the Lord's commands. He set me up a nation and cast thy enemies away. He's standing here before you. So let me 
me hear you say, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go, we cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease, the devil is defeated, we are blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Hey, the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. Yeah. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around and around and around and around. Oh, we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. The devil is defeated. We are blessed. Yeah. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, brother. We are blessed. Thank you, brother. I, I told I told Brother Jay last night, I said, man, I wish I had half the gift of that singing that you have, man. Man, it's just beautiful, wonderful. Just, uh, just uh, oh, man, that's great. Thank you. Uh, brother uh, Evangelist, good luck. Would you uh, please give us the final words, please? Thank you. Uh, before I, I start the, word, the final word, I would just like to sing this song. I like it so much. You are the Lord that we let me. You are the Lord, my healer. Who sent your word and it healed my disease? You are the Lord, my healer. Yeah. You are the Lord that he led me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your words, how to heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. I just want to tell the world, God has come to heal us. Yeah. And God wants us to rise up from our slumber. Many of the Christians today are sleeping. Mm. Many are no longer doing the work God handed over to them. When I read the book of Samuel chapter, uh, book of Psalms chapter 44, verse 26, mm -hmm. the book of Psalm 44, verse 26, he says, Arise from my head, I redeem ox, for thy mercy's sake. And when you read Isaiah chapter uh, 33, verse uh, 10, the Lord is telling us, now I will arise. Now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will be exalted. Now I will be lifted up. The Lord wants to be lifted up. He wants himself to be lifted up by man. Yeah, yeah. But what is man doing? Man is just living and snoring. They are slumbering. Man is no longer interested. I could remember the old time when uh, my father was a pastor, Reverend Uguza. Early in the morning, he would wake up. 
he carried the microphone, he go out and preach the gospel. He go to television, he go to radio stations, he will preach the gospel. Hmm. And then the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ then was without a miss. When a sinner comes into the house of God, God will reduce such person immediately. Are we seeing such thing today? It is time for us to arise. Wherever you are as a child of God, hearing my voice right now, arise, put away things that can thank God. Amen. Put away things that can make God feel annoyed, separated from you. These are two things, annoyance, being separated. If God separates himself from you, you are doomed. And that is what is happening in the world. From the 31st December 2019, I was praying in the church and God gave me a revelation. And that revelation is there will be hardship in 2019. In 2020, sorry. And when God gave me that revelation on the 31st, I, I said it on the 31st night. The next day, God showed me a place like a desert where people are running for help. Mm -hmm. I was telling many on social media, and I tell them it is time for us to arise and pray because <clears throat> what going to face is so much. When we talk about arising, God has already decided to redeem the world. He just put this in the mind of the people so that they will know that he ruled among the world. He met the rulers he placed them, he allows them, allowed them to do whatever they want to do. But he just wants to tell the people of the world that he is still God. When we read the book of Psalm, chapter 132, verse 8, Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your act of your strength. When we talk about arising, we talk about our innermost parts. When we come forth with the strength in us, God will see that we are serious to accept Him. When you are serious to accept God, God will arise and manifest Himself. As I, I was preparing for our program, God told me, I have arrived. I am ready to redeem them. Mm. I am ready for the single step you people have taken. I am ready. The only question there is, are we ready to accept the offer of God? Man ready to refrain from his evil way and embrace God. I just want to let us know when God was this saying from the book of Isaiah 31, verse 2, he said, God will arise and do his work. Did you know? Did you know you are you are so so important to God. Yeah. Every one created by the image of God is so important. Therefore, God is not sleeping, is not tired of caring or healing us. God is always available in our life whenever we call him is always available. 
when when Paul was saying from the book of Romans chapter 8 from verse 1 he said now therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus yeah. so redemption has come through Christ Jesus healing has come through Christ Jesus no wonder most of the hospital says we treat but God heals. Let us come yeah. back to the foundation. To the foundation. And the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Without Jesus, there is no hope for mankind. So if no we hope. can accept before him will be blessed and the Lord will continually to enrich us daily in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. I thank God that you are my new brother in Nigeria. Thank you, man. I pray God that we will stay connected for the rest of our lives. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, awesome, awesome work. You know, when when we started to connect, you know, I, I just pray, God, that he would let his spirit work it all out, you know, and we we just met just a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, and we've been talking, and I thank God that he sent you into my life. Uh, I want to, through you, just your message just now, God reminded me, he told me Saturday that he wanted me to have an altar prayer, an uh, 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 altar call. He wanted me to invite the lost into the kingdom. And so on the heels of your sermon, I'm going to ask anybody that's listening to my voice that if you would like to have Jesus to come into your life, if you would like to have Jesus to come into your heart and to be your savior, to lead you and to be your shepherd, I'm going to ask that you would repeat these words, uh, close your eyes, and in your heart, talk to God, and he will become your savior. Dear Lord Jesus, and brothers, repeat after me, help me along. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a lost sinner. I know that I'm a lost sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you died for my sins. And rose from the dead. And rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I turn from my sins. Invite you to come. Invite you to come into my heart and life. Into my heart and life. I trust you, Lord. And I will follow you, Lord. And I will follow you. You are my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would allow these words, you allow these words of these men that represent you on this earth, that you will allow these words that we've said over the last hour to multiply, to spin around this globe. Holy Spirit, I allow, ask that you would allow these words to go into the lost sheep, to find them wherever they are. If it's 10 years from now, if it's 20 years from now, if this earth shall tarry, God, will you allow these words to manifest themselves into the life of the lost sheep? We thank you for the privilege to work in your kingdom. We thank you for the privilege to represent you as your men of God. We thank you for the viewers that are on this line that have watched periodically through 
since the beginning. And God, I ask a special favor. I ask a special favor that you would even make the hedge around their bodies stronger, that you would make the hedge around their household stronger, that you would make the hedge around their families even stronger, God, and so that nothing can penetrate them, God. Let no enemy, God, let this virus, let it not penetrate them, God. We thank you. It's already done in your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, for your death in your burial, but most of all, Jesus, I thank you for your resurrection. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I thank you for your healing blood. Jesus, I thank you for your healing blood that flows from the mountain highs to the valley lows. Mm. Yeah, Jesus, yeah, I thank yeah. you for your healing blood that flows in our bodies, Jesus. Holy yeah. Spirit, I thank you for the mind that you give us, the yes. mind you give us to do your will, God. We thank you for the unction that you give us to do your will. We thank you, Father. Now, Holy Ghost, I ask that you would put the remedy to the virus in the man's mind. I don't know which one it's going to be, how many it will be, but Holy Spirit, I ask that you give them the remedy. I know you already got it. Mm. Just give it to them and show them what to do. Thank you, Father God. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Brothers, I thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we will be back online Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Um, and uh, now I will say this. I'm really excited um, because we were expecting two other brothers. Uh, we got uh, Pastor Jeffrey, Pastor Jeffrey out of uh, Kenya, out of Kenya. And they've been having a lot of flooding. He showed me some pictures of their homes, uh, floods, whew, almost halfway to the roof in some areas. Some of the homes have collapsed. Some of the people don't have walls like we live in, brothers and sisters. They don't have plaster and drywall and solid walls. Some of them have tin that they constructed uh, and, and that's very stable. So when the water comes and the mud gets to moving, the houses collapse and people have actually died. And so we really want to hear from Pastor Jeffrey. Also, we have Pastor Terry down in Johannesburg, and his network went out this morning. I talked to him last night. He was all excited to be on. Uh, so join us on Wednesday. Pastor Terry will talk about how he met God. And he, he, was, a, he, ra he was raised Buddha. He lives in Johannesburg. His family is from India. He was raised as a Hindu. He worshiped Buddha. And one day he challenged God. He married a Christian woman. And he challenged God. He said, if you're truly God, then come down and see me right now. And God visited him, according to Pastor Terry. He didn't see his face, but he saw his glory. Hallelujah, man. I, when I talked to him, I, I was blown away, blown away. So try to join us on Wednesday at 3, and I'm going to pray and ask God that he would make them available to us. Uh, Brother Jay, thank you for your worship. Pastor Knox, thank you. Pastor Knox is broadcasting this across the world. Uh, can you tell us some of the cities it's going into? Uh, well, some of the cities, some of the countries, we're, we're in North Korea, um, Johannesburg, and um, actually Nigeria, um, and they're just awesome. all over the states, so all over the U.S. here, Texas, everywhere. Awesome. I wanted to take a moment to share my one of my screens. Uh, I wanted the brothers and sisters to see, um, can you see this, the pictures here? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Okay, good. I want I wanted you to see where uh, uh, Evangelist Good Luck lives. This is Abuja, Nigeria. I don't know how many of you have seen Abuja, Nigeria. I just started looking at it a few days ago. Beautiful. Look at how these highways are built. Isn't that beautiful architecture? Uh, I look at this and I get amazed that this is so beautiful to me. Yeah. Uh, this, I don't even know what this is here. Some big mound. I mean, oh, okay. I wish he was still in the line. He could help us with some of this. You are welcome. So don't, when you think of Africa, don't think of some hut. Now they got villages in certain areas, but their civilization. Look at that. That's some beautiful architecture. Okay. That's, a, that's some beautiful work there. Um, some housing there. Good. This is where he lives. Now, this is okay. This would represent 
probably some areas in the villages, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, there's a railway there. Good, good, good. Okay, I think that's enough, David. I wanted to take a moment. To... Good, good, good. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you so much, folks, for uh, joining in. And uh, we're going to end the call here. I appreciate you. We love you. And we'll talk to you soon. Uh, well, I see uh, I see Sean Griffin is on, Pastor Sean Griffith. Uh, Bishop Thomas, hello to you. Uh, my brother, Robert Jameson. Sister Rhonda Dickens. Uh, Lula Patton is online. Cousin Nicole Rhodes. Uh, who else do we see here? Cousin Dr. Michael Robinson's online. Uh, who else do we have? Mm, I'm looking at comments. Uh, but I'm not going to get this right. A core core of Puti. Uh, apologize for saying that wrong, but I just want to give you a shout out. Uh, Sister Lena Lang is online. Christina Guyton. Uh, we thank you all for joining the call. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern. Thank you.